Thank you for joining us today. Tempo Africa TV, your show point of view. I'm your host, Mr. Herman Lomanga. Today we're going to talk about revenue. Revenue, what means revenue? Inside our family, especially us, people living abroad, we, they call us diaspora. Revenue is all the income that you collect, all the money that you collect before taxes. That's what is called revenue. From you to understand what means revenue, you got to stay tuned to Tempo Africa TV by this time, by this moment, so we can share with you a little knowledge that we got from revenue. If you want to join the conversation, you can still call us at 612-224-2020. I'm not alone in the studio. I have a guest, a familiar guest, by the name of Mr. Alun Sam. Welcome, Mr. Alun Sam. Thank you, Herman. Today, we're going to talk to our view, explain to them revenue. When you hear that word, revenue, what comes in your mind? Thank you, Herman, for uh, having me on the show. Uh, revenue is uh, your income. Uh, there are two different types of income uh, that, can, that you can make here in the United States. Uh, we have what we call a W-2 income, meaning that you work for a company and they pay you on a month or a, a, a bi-weekly basis. And at the end of the year, they'll give you a W-2. That's one form of income. Uh, there is what we call 1099 income, which is another form of income that you are self-employed uh, or you work for a company as a contractor. And at the end of the year, you don't get a W-2, but you get a 1099. Uh, we just finished tax, uh, our tax year here in, uh, in the U.S., uh, which is normally uh, uh, April 15. Uh, this year they have extended it to the 18, but uh, we just finished with that. So generally speaking, what we call revenue is the amount of money that one's collect uh, either bi-weekly or towards the end of the year. Thank you. And today we only want to focus about revenue family. When I say revenue family, you understand the word family inside. That means inside the house, what dad, mom can provide for the family. Because we are not talking about the business like uh, Mr. Lun just said about the 1099. We're going to talk about the revenue that you collect the money. At the end of the year, they give you a W-2 form. Then you can claim your taxes and get your money back. Just a clarification. The 1099 can be for individuals. If you work as a contractor for a company, you're not paid W-2. You're paid a 1099. So the 1099 is just a different form, meaning that you know they don't collect the taxes for you. You have to still pay taxes at the end. But this is a form of revenue that is for the individual or for the family. It is not a business. A business would be a K-1 or a C or an S corp. So that's a totally different type of, of income. But for individuals in the U.S., we have W-2 income okay. and we have what we call a 1099 income. So the 1099 is for individuals. It's not for but individuals that are working as independent entities. So that's a different. You're not working directly for a company, but you are hired as a contractor. See, Mr. Alunik, explain that clearly so you can have a better understanding about that. Now, coming back to subjects today, the revenue. The revenue is your net income plus taxes. I mean, your net income before your expenses. Your gross income before expenses. Yeah, yeah. Your, your gross income before expenses. Yes. That means like the, the money that you collect before even they take the tax away. Exactly. Which one is different from your earning income? Exactly. I want to be clear. Earning income is the money that you're taking home after tax. After you pay the all tax, state tax, government tax, medical tax, the money that you're taking home with you, that's what they call it earning income. Don't be confused between earning income and revenue. Again, revenue is the, the, your all income plus your, your ex expenses. Okay, revenue inside one family. 
What's the most important things the family can think about it after that revenue become earning income? There, there are two different sources. Some people, like I said earlier, would get it as a whole, as the revenue, they would get it as a whole. So for example, if you're an interpreter or you're doing other independent type of job, they will pay you your full salary. You're not, they're not gonna take any taxes. You'll get the full salary as it is indicated. If you're a W-2 income, the company that you work for will take deductions. Those deductions are pre-tax depending on how you filled out uh, uh, the 1040 forms that they give you when they hire you. So those will determine, okay, I am hired today. Uh, I want to take out, to claim myself, or I wanna claim two people, my kids, and so forth and so on. So you pay less taxes upfront because you're claiming a lot of people. If you claim zero, means that they don't take any taxes at the end of the year, you will get money back. So there are different strategies and diff for different people, it matters how you run, if you're a W-2 income, how you claim your taxes. But the most important part of all of this is what we call budgeting, meaning that everybody gets the same income. It's the $1. Out of that $1, some people will spend 50 cents, some people will spend 10 cents. It depends on how you run uh, the, the, your, your spendings that you have control over most of the time the revenue is dictated by what we call the market uh, on any f different field the prices of labor uh, doesn't fluctuate much the last 20 years I would say labor has been very stagnant that's why we have a huge immigration pool in the US to always lower uh, the, 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 the income of people or the labor price to always keep it, that's why we have a lot of new blood coming into the, the market. But as an individual, you can always leverage yourself by training, by uh, creating a network, and by being more helpful in terms of how you work in the company. Uh, even if people are not paying you yet, spend more time into what I call volunteering your time, meaning give more than what they're paying you until they figure out that you're an asset or you bring value to the company. In the long run, that's the only way you can increase because now you're bringing value added into the company. So when you're providing value into the company, they would say, oh, okay, this is an asset. This is an individual that we can count on that you know, would improve this, that, or the other f for us as investors or as owners of the company. So those are the few things that I would say you know, people can think about when, we, when we're talking about revenue. Oh, that's very good. About revenue, we, we come back to the revenue again. The revenue is everything that you're collecting. If you're working for one company, everything that you're collecting after you provide the service. As Mr. Lun just said now, if you want to become an asset, an asset for the company, that's what is going to generate income from you by you being a volunteer, by you giving more time than expecting and they become an asset to the company and from that that asset that you become the company can you can start to generate income from that point also create your own network it's very important because we as immigrants living abroad most of the time we depend to our job we get up in the morning go to work wherever they pay us we start budgeting the, uh, only from the money that we get Earning income is the money that we're collecting after taxes. And now the subject become to the budget. How do we gonna use that money so it can help us until next time that we're gonna get paid? Most of the people get paid bi-weekly. What I mean by weekly, after two weeks. Some of us get paid weekly, every week. You need a budget. When I mean a budget, a strong budget that is going to help you so you can keep your life rolling while you're thinking about your future. Which one is easy to say, but it's a little bit hard to do. But with a more courage, more determination, and also yourself, putting yourself on a place like, this is how much I'm making every two weeks, and this is my expenses. I want to say something about expense. Expense is everything that you owe on one way. It, that means everything that you're paying after you have your income, everything that you're paying, 
let's say you're paying your electric bill let's go you're paying your apartment you're paying your house you're paying food shoes for your kids all that one is expenses earning income minus your expenses if all your bills now we're talking about the money is gonna left we call that saving how you gonna try to save some money so that that money you can use that money for the better future when i say use maybe invest that's another show but from now on we're gonna talk about budget revenue from revenue we go to earning income which one is the money that you work for the all time minus your expenses now we got income from your income how you gonna budget your income Mr. Hmm? for one family dad mom and they have a revenue let's say re monthly revenue of two thousand dollars they got two kids and they have all the expenses what you have to tell them how they can budget so they can survive until next time then they can get paid there are a few types of expenses uh, what we call fixed expense meaning stuff that we need to buy no matter who you are you need it uh, we'll talk about let's say uh, your house that's something that everybody needs a place to live in so that's a fixed expense uh, the, the car for us living here in Minnesota for most of us it's an expense that most of us have uh, the heating bills the, the electricity the water uh, depending if you live in an apartment or not some people may pay those bills some people may not uh, those are what we call the basic fixed costs so every month you know that this is going to be a bill that pretty much you have to pay those you have control over what I tell people most of the time is those fixed costs don't have to be put on check. If you cannot control those fixed costs, then your budget is out of whack. The way I explain most of this stuff, when uh, because when people come to me for financial advice, you know, most of the stuff that I say is try first of all with what you understand and what you control. That is something that you know you have control over. The rest of the stuff, the revenue going up, is not so much your control you can have outside forms of re revenues that you can some people get more jobs it's more complicated I would say time is of essence so figure out different ways that you can leverage yourself with the information or the network that you have that you can earn additional funds somewhere else not just working hours because working hours is fixed and your tax at W2 income you're taxed at a very high level you have very limited deductions when you're working W-2 because it's standardized. If you are somebody who is trying to make it, generally speaking, you have creative ways of generating funds where you don't, they don't tax you right away. It can be a 1099 income where you're getting income from other sources. As we have a lot of skills that people don't think has value, particularly for us Africans living in diaspora. Some of us speak four, five, six languages. That's an asset. A That's big an asset. asset. That's a big asset. A lot of companies are here right now hiring people f looking for interpreters. But that gives you a little bit more leverage in terms of your time and managing your money. But that means that you're very disciplined in terms of how you spend money. Because if you're very frivolous with money, then you run into issues. And that's most of the time where we run into problems. I have clients that come to me that make $35,000 a year. And if they tell you how much money they have saved out throughout that year, you'll be amazed at how much money they can generate. Some of them, what they do is what we call the taunting system, where every month somebody picks up $500 a month, $1,000 a month, whatever the number may be. There are 10 of them, and every year they're forced to save at least, let's say, 12000 because we have 12 months, and there are 12 of them into this group. So it forces them at once to be able to collect that kind of money. That's an additional revenue. But it's a form of saving. It's a 0% loan, but you get that money back. So you have creative ways where people are making a living comfortably and uh, owning homes. People are able to, to buy with very little income owning homes. Obviously, the market has shifted a little bit right now. But there are creative ways if we're healthy societies 
we can find ways different ways of generating more money and saving it it's in the savings that you can invest if the money is spent it is a consumption mean that you're not generating anything you cannot build anything without being able to save that money so those are the kind of small tactical things that I that I advise people to do meaning save as much if the money is into your account don't feel like you have to burn it I have to go buy whenever you're buying you making somebody else rich you are becoming poor and making somebody else rich so that those are the kind of things that we have to think about thank you mister and I want to remind our audience like mister Lin is a banker is a banker who work with mortgage company wherever you want to get a house it's very appropriate that you talk to someone who have a knowledge about what you try to get into. That's why somebody like Mr. Alun can help you to get your house and to prepare you how you can budge so you can get your mortgage, start having your own house. Speaking about budget, that's what I was trying to touch to. We have a habit, especially African from diaspora, our habit of spending. Mm -hmm. We're spending more than we earn. And that's why in the long run, that's why it's hurting us. So that's the, the most problem that we're having. We spend with the, the things that we really don't need, but for the things that we want. And on the end of the day, we always fall behind. When I mean fall behind, like you always hold people more than you can collect. Mm -hmm. Why you cannot change our way of spending, our habit of spending, especially as African who live abroad? It's a psychological uh, fact. Uh, it's we're bombarded every day with wants. You want this. You want that. You want, that's what advertisements are. It's from the radio, the car, the, the the. Even in the bathrooms now, you have advertisements. So. The wants people, they wake up desires, and these are sophisticated studies that they have done on human beings, so they, they know how we react in terms of the desire. They know how to wake up these desires, uh, make us salivate about buying this, owning this, those kind of things. They, 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 they have studied human beings enough now. But what I tell people is, you work hard, very hard to earn this money. Who do you think deserves to be paid first? Is it the guy who is making that shirt, that suit, or the shoes, or the car, or you, the individual working for this money? Oh, I mean, I will tell you right away, like, most of the time we go, especially our women, you know, when you look for women, you can't find a woman home, most likely she's in a mall on a shoe department. Mm -hmm. And she went to spend $100, like she come with four or five shoes matching uh, dresses. The way we spend, Mm -hmm. It's not the way we earn. And that habit, we have to break it through. Before we break that habit, we have to understand ourselves in a way like, this is what I earn, and this is my limit. Why we always want to go over limit all the time, and knowing like this over limit is killing me. Not only me, it's killing my family. Because sometimes it gets to the point like, a dad wake up in the morning, there is no milk on the fridge for the kids. Can you imagine that? Hmm? Just because we went out last night or do something else, then we spent extra $20 that's supposed to have milk for the kids home. Mm -hmm. Why we cannot understand, like I have on some point, change my way. Because anyway, when we talk about change, change don't come to you until you make a change correct why we don't do that it's what we call the spendings of prestige uh, we like to spend to look good in front of families friends co-workers or so forth and so on because we're social animals that's part of our interaction so that's part of feeling like you know we accept it feeling like you know we belong okay so and then understand also that for a lot of people uh, buying makes them happy it's something that allows them to feel like you know we we are buying so it is something that when we get out makes us feel good 
for five seconds and then we forget and then guess what? The credit card bill follows us and it follows us home and it follows us for a long time. Uh, a lot of people don't understand, first of all, that a credit card is a debt. It's like you're spending money that you, don't, you have not earned yet, so you are supplementing your revenue with that debt. But the problem is that debt grows faster than your revenue. Because it's every day. By every the time day. you wake up in the morning, every they day. charge you the interest without you even knowing, like the card I'm holding is the one who's going to kill me on the long run. That's why I always think like credit card really people who deserve it, people on the, on the business. But that's my own point of view. How about your point of view? If you have something to say, call us at 612-224-2020. Mr. Lim, you can you can continue. Yeah. So the, it's it's a matter of 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 stopping that uh, so-called happiness that we get because we are buying. A lot of people, particularly women, have that tendency. But even men, you know, we all have you know tendencies to go shopping on shopping free to feel good about ourselves. It's it's their easiest way go to the gym or find something else to do uh, to to uh, to grieve you that relief you know that that new oxygen that you need uh saving and being an investor that's another show that we would have most probably about how they are tied because if you cannot in save you cannot invest if opportunities came to you today and you have no means of participating is no matter how good of an idea it is you cannot be part of it because you don't have any savings you gave it to somebody else you made somebody else rich you know other ways that there are different ways of, of increasing this equity or whatever you call it with different forms of buying, but that's a little bit more cumbersome. So today we'll just t t talk about the revenue and what you as a consumer have control over. So a lot of times pay yourself first. And uh, part of if you're a W-2, another way of being able to reduce your taxable income is being able to pay what we call a 401k retirement plan where 5% can go is allocated directly. Most companies will match you to 5%. Uh, I would say some people will go up to 6%, but at least they will match you. So on every $5 that you put, they'll put another $5. So you gain $10. And they don't tax you at that $1, they tax you at that 95 because you took five cents out already. So that reduces your taxable income. So Uncle Sam doesn't go after all that money and potentially if you're watching your investment you can go up every uh, year by 10 percent seven percent now they are sophisticated tools online that will allow you when you buy it uh, an IRA for a thousand dollars calculating it at the end of the year how much revenue you made or how much you lost so there are sophisticated tools online right now that you can use See, that's why we want to talk to you about, about your revenue. From your revenue, then we can see your earning income. From your earning income, we see how you can batch because it's very important so you can know how to manage your money. When we talk about budget, it's about managing your money. From your earning income, take your expenses off. See how much money left. Before even that, as Mr. Alun said, you have to pay yourself because you are the one who get up every day in the morning, especially as we live in Minnesota, we know about the weather. Thanks God the weather is a little bit good now. But when it's winter time, you have to clean up your snow on your car. By mistake, some of us are live in an apartment. You clean up somebody's car. You can't even go to work. We see that before. But pay yourself first. When I mean pay yourself, Take some money, put away, or, by the way, Mr. Alun say, 401k, invest with your company, or take some money away. That money is going to create a saving, and that saving, you can invest that for your future. Also, if you have a family, as we talk about revenue, family, if you have a family, it's going to help your family in the long run. Because if you receive your income, you don't pay yourself first. You're making everybody around you rich. Because all what we call expenses is the things that you need and you have to pay. Guess what? Those people is like generate they generate the income from you. How do we pay our bills? The electric company. We even don't see them. But we have to pay them. 
So think about that. How you can change that so you can start paying yourself first and then pay everybody else than around you the stuff that you need. Because we go more about the stuff that we want, that we need. That's why you wake up in the morning, your baby doesn't have a diapers. Can you believe that? That's why we have this show, Point of View. You can call us and tell us your point of view, what you think about the revenue that we're talking about today. That's why Temple Africa TV is here, so that we can communicate with you. We don't have to agree with everything, but we can at least communicate. By communicate, we can take from each other something that we don't have. Mr. Allen, our budget is very necessary for us when we, we do our budget that we keep something aside mm -hmm. like flat in case of flat tire like the, we always have like a spare tire on our cars mm -hmm. you think it's very necessary that we do that it, it is it's uh, everything in life is risk it's how do you manage risk uh, because a lot of us why we end up you know throwing a lot of money into the credit cards is because we never prepare for the rainy days where stuff come about and that we have no control over. So a lot of these things is just preparedness and on financial planning uh, is, is looking at risk and saying okay this is how much I make right now I'm planning to work up to 65 and by 65 I want to save X amount of money to be able to retire this is the type of revenue that I'm going to get when I'm retiring. But if I have not saved that money up front, unfortunately, I'll be forced to work at Walmart until I die because I have to have some form of living. Because what you get in Social Security for most people is, what, $1,200? You cannot make a living today with $1,200. No, you can't. Okay. Especially living in Minnesota, you can't. It doesn't matter you're single or you have a family. You just can't. And just to, without cutting you off, the poverty guide, if your earning income is less than $54,000 a year, you are considered under the poverty guide. Check your fact and you're going to see it. So if you're making less than $54,000 a year, from American point of view, you are not even existing but some of us we're making less than that we got cars we live in an apartment we got two or three cars think about that think about that very careful what you have to do so that you can be successful in your own way in your own life by following the show point of view in tempo affect tv we can communicate with you, with Monsieur Alun, who's a banker. He can tell you exactly what you need to do. You don't have to agree with everything, but at least follow what we're telling you. Maybe it can make a difference in your life. Saving is very important on everybody's life. Because wherever we get up in the morning, we go to work, we're taking a risk. That risk needs to be have some remuneration, like something coming back from that risk. That's why it's very important so we can have a saving. But most of us, we don't have, we tend not to have a saving account. We always go having a checking account. Why is that us people, African community living abroad? Why we don't open up a saving account in a bank we always go to checking account. Hey, I want to see my money. You wake up in the morning, check the computer. Oh, I, I, no, I spent this, this, this. Oh, I see got $300. Oh, okay, I'm good. We don't, we don't put money on a saving account. What do you think? What's the reason why? Saving accounts used to be popular when they used to pay at least decent amounts of returns. Nowadays, they're 0, 0.00 something, you know, so pretty much they don't pay much. But it's just a way of putting, allocating funds that you're not touching. Uh, and generally speaking, the way I trick my brain is I open up another credit union account where money is diverted to that account directly. I generally speaking don't have a card or don't have anything into that account. So it's just money that I would say, you know, 
take 20% of my income, just put it into this account. And if you, your payroll department can do that. Before assign, uh, giving you all the money, they will ask you, how do you want us to pay you? Uh, out of the $100, you can say $20 goes into account A and $80 goes into account B. You can force yourself on to leaving just with account B. The other $20 that is going to account A, you have no idea what it is going there. It's not your money. It's, it just sits there. So there are different ways that you can trick yourself. There are different strategies that you can play with your uh, ideas that you, you can, tactical ideas that you can play with to be able to be able to save. Because saving is crucial. If you cannot save money, you cannot be independent. You are going to work your entire existence, but you're not going to have anything to show for it because consumption is like taking a march, putting a gasoline on it and putting it on fire because that's what consumption is. You can never recuperate it. Very few, even if you spend $1, if you're lucky, you get 20 cents back. That's pretty much it. And that's what a thrift store or anything else is. Mean that you devaluate it the, the moment it's a car or whatever it is, the moment it gets out of the shop, it has lost its value. So most of the stuff that we buy don't have that kind of value, but we buy it with hard earned revenues. So you control that. Your, 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 your attitude towards money has to change. Pay yourself first. That is determinant. If you cannot pay yourself first, you'll always be under the poverty line. It doesn't matter if you make a million dollars. We see all these basketball players that are making a lot of money, but they cannot save any of it. If they go into strike for two weeks and they don't pay them, they're in trouble because they have no savings. You could make $50,000 and be very comfortable because you live within your means. That you have control over. Spending is fire. It is burning the bushes. So that, I tell everybody, doesn't matter your income bracket, you have to keep that under check. Also, from us, especially African, we live in a board. When it comes to saving, we try to ignore the saving. But some of us do save, but we save in a different way. Let's say my earning income is $100. Every time I get paid, I took $20. I keep on uh, my wallet, mm. whatever, in my house. Mm. I keep doing that, doing that. What you think about that idea? Like, instead of put saving that on the bank, you prefer, like, you know what, I don't want the bank benefit for my money, all those stuff. Let me take this money away. But let me at least keep it with me just in case I need it. What you think about, because most of us, people really come to me and tell me that. Most of us do that. And you, as a banker, you have experience. You work on a mortgage. You understand the money more than maybe I do. Yeah. What do you think about that idea? taking your own saving and keeping that in your house. It's risky because there is no guarantee into money. So if, for example, there is a fire in the house for X, Y, Z, different reason, you lose all that money. There's no guarantee to it. You lost it. Somebody steals it, you lost it because there is no trace. Cash is something that we cannot trace. There is no way of knowing that, you know, if it's safe or not. There are too many risks right now to put. And the, the, the industry itself, America now does not want to deal with a lot of cash. It is a, a business now that is more electronic cash, meaning that it has to be traceable. Every money that we're putting into the system has to be something that we can trace. If, for example, I kept $50,000 in my house and I want to buy a house, tomorrow I come to the bank and I drop deposit that $50,000, the next day I would have the FBI knocking at my door and saying, we just saw $50,000 in cash, what happened to this money? Because that kind of deposit, there is a red flag automatically at the bank that says there is money laundering. We need to figure out the source of this money. It has to be traceable. Not that anybody did anything wrong. It's just the system has changed. So you have to change with the times that you live in. I'm not saying having $1,000 in case you know you need something is a bad thing. But keeping more than that kind of money into your house is a dangerous habit to have. It's easier to find a credit union that would lend you money when you need it. And there are a lot of good credit unions. That's another show that we would most probably have here. Different ways that, because if you wanted to buy a car, it's good that you're a member of a good credit union. If you needed a line of credit, it's good that you have a good credit union. If you had plans to open a business, it's a good habit to have a good credit union. So there are good credit cards at good rates that credit unions offer. So those are all different 
avenues or financial roads that you can borrow here that would be beneficial to you and to your family but it's just gathering the information and understanding exactly and that's why every week we meet with you guys to talk about these issues to see different avenues that you can leverage yourself and benefit from uh, uh, from your financial life here in the US because that's the reason why we came here is to earn a living and to make a living so you might as well keep that dream because that was what brought you here left your hometown left your relatives to come in this country is to make something out of yourself but if you're just working and dropping the money it's like you have a bucket with a hole in it every penny that you put in it goes out and that there is no benefit to you there is no benefit to your family and a lot of this prestige spendings unfortunately is just insecurities psychological insecurities that we all have that we just have to all bury and put under the ground and live comfortably as decent human beings in this country that's why Tempo Africa TV is here with your show point of view to tell you what we think about the way we can manage our money. Remember, your revenue is all your money that you earn. Your earning income, do everything after your expenses, save some money, then it can help you. I want to emphasize something. Wherever you work, before you get paid, you have to provide a service. When you provide a service, you get paid one week or two weeks after. By the time you get paid, the service you provide, that money already devaluate. That money already lost some of its value. You're supposed to get $100. When you get that $100, it's $100 bill. But the value of that $100 after one week, maybe it's only $85. Keep that in mind and do everything that you can do so you can pay yourself and you can save some money because next show we're going to talk about those stuff, how you can save your money, how you can invest your money because no matter what we do, we left home with a dream and don't let your dream fall behind. And the only things you, the only way your dream can work is for you to make a change on your habit of spending, how you can manage your money. I want to take my guest today, Mr. Alun Sam, as always. Thank you for clarifying so many things today. Thank you, Herman. For Tempo Africa TV, I'm your host, Mr. Herman. Just remember, we go to work where we call job. Job is standing for G-O-B, what means just over broke. Until next time, take care of yourself and stay tuned with Tempo Africa TV. And we'll see you next time, same time. Thank you.